So the goal of this podcast is really to highlight the journey of founders in tech that saw a gap in the market and took the initiative to fill it. I've always been fascinated by people who see a problem and then really have the guts to take action to actually solve that problem. So in today's podcast, and it's our first podcast, we have the pleasure of talking with Masood Duzan, who is CEO and co-founder of Jib in Sunnyvale, California. The goal of Jib really is to transcend the physical boundaries of visual collaboration. Jib is a Cisco Solutions Plus offering and complements our video conferencing solution experience in a pretty innovative way, which we'll talk about. And like many applications out there, it's embracing AI and its offering. So we really want to dig deep into um, what's happening there as well. So Masood, welcome to my first episode of Founders Journey. Thank you so much, John, for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Happy to be here. And I'm glad to talk to your audience. And hopefully, we can add some value and some insight to what we have done to bring Jeep to the point that we are uh, collaborating heavily with Cisco. Okay. So first, I want to explore sort of the company mission and the formation of Jib. Can you tell us a little bit about the journey that led you to create Jib? What inspired you to start the company? So it's a, it's a, how long do we have time here? So <laughs> <laughs> we got time. <laughs> it's going to be, a, you know, the things that there's a long version and I'll make it a bit shorter version. So uh, my co-founder, he's been uh, the lecturer at the Australian university at the time that we started. And he wanted to do um, tutoring, online tutoring. And he, you know, he created the software connected to a physical, you know, pen to be able to do when they're doing like a video, video call at the time to be able to write and show their writing was teaching math to be able to do that happen. And um, by looking at that, I looked at what more we can do with this. And basically yeah. I got engaged with that. By the way, he's my nephew as well. So I started sponsoring him and then I just uh, looking at that and I was my personality, I love challenge and take it to the, to the next level of activities. Uh, the first thing that came to my mind, this has way more uh, application than just yeah. train, and we can make it to the, the bigger stage than be, you know, and to do that, we should get rid of the hardware. So that's basically how we started to create something that without necessarily using any type of a specific hardware or using a hardware normally we have, and that's called our smartphone. So we use right. the camera to be able to capture the writing and take it to global stage. So that's how the whole the initiative started to, to, to get there. Then we eventually, um, we started looking at this, um, working closely with a different type of cameras and especially like Cisco solution, you know, hardware cameras to make this a reality for the market going towards a hybrid. So let's talk a little bit about the market gap that you identified and what is Jib specifically designed to fill? Okay, so the market gap that, that we identify is in the hybrid world that we are moving forward, the thing that there is actually, there's so many times that even in the Cisco live event that we hear that we have to be inclusive. So what the inclusivity means, means being making everything that the user uses be available during their meeting, no matter where they are. If they're in the office, if they're at home, if they are in the, you know, in a remote location, they should be able to contribute to that meeting that they are inside of it. So different users has different requirements and there is no one platform that allows no matter what medium that I'm using, I'm using a dry erase whiteboard, I'm using a web board, I'm using a, a you know, iPad or whatever thing that I like to use, be able to contribute in the especially in the brainstorming or the, the, the or the meetings that needs to have drawing or writing availability in that meeting to be able to do that and connect so that's where we found out jeep is the solution that connects all platform together allows people to use a normal whiteboard to use pen and paper to use ipad to use webboard all connect in a simple 
area immediately, real time, to connect and work together. And that's we found that there is a gap. Nobody's fulfilling that gap. And that's where Jeep is doing it very successful. Yeah, if I look at the market, I've been in Collab for a while. There's always been a struggle and have been many attempts to solve the whiteboarding problem, right? There's interoperability between different meeting platforms typically doesn't translate. There's different form factors. And then there's the fact that some people just like the simplicity of an analog whiteboard, right? And so the question is, how do you digitize that? So I think you got a nice market niche on bringing together different platforms and taking that analog physical world and bringing it into the digital world. But we'll get into a little bit more about what the solution is like. But part of what I wanted to talk about is your journey of forming this company, right? So what what was that aha moment? Maybe you were lying in bed one night and you had this vision for Inkers or Jib. What made you take that first step to say, ah, we're gonna form this company? Well, when the moment comes is the moment that then you feel something passionate about. So mm. that, that, that becomes a moment that you say, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. And I've been explaining this to you know, so many people in this way. Like nobody knows what the future is, but like, right. anybody, you know, talk to any financial analyst or anybody wants to talk about that. I give you the best offer that's going to happen tomorrow. Nobody knows is a best guess. When it becomes an aha moment to create a company and as a founder is you can, okay, I believe in my own BS. Like I believe this is going to happen. Right. So, I like that. Leading your own BS. Exactly. And you put all your life into it, you know? I basically, uh, I was, you know, I was in, in a seven figure, you know, uh, income at the time that I started this and I just got rid of it to start this with, with, you know, three kids, you know, yeah. to be able to just throw that and do this, you need to really believe in what you yeah. want to do. And then I moved from Australia to us within a couple of weeks, bringing all my family over here. Wow. Again, these kind of things, it needs a uh, passion behind it and a belief. And uh, these are the things I think makes makes the funders, you know, first of all, it's very stressful. It's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. All the things that, you know, stress makes you feel younger. So that's another way of looking at it. You know, <laughs> if, you, if you enjoy what you're doing, it makes you feel better. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. So I always wonder about that aha moment, that aha moment. And I love your analogy of no one knows the future and if someone does. They're, they're full of it, right? <laughs> but if you believe, um, you might as well go and pursue it. And it sounds like you're all in and that key thing, you were passionate about this topic and, and being able to solve these problems. Uh, so what was your first step? You know, so you've got that passion, that aha moment. It sounds like you made a big commitment over the past couple of years by moving to the US, right? Correct. So the things that, you know, the, the next step is obviously to create a team. Now the team I'm talking about is from the people to invest in your company, from mm -hmm. the people to work with you in your passion and put, you know, to become part of your journey and commit to that and uh, be able to enjoy the journey. So the things that, you know, uh, one of the things that I find out, if you just look at for the outcome, it's very, very stressful and difficult. You have to, because it's going to be very difficult. You know, there is like, you know, one good thing that I can say is for everyone, I believe that if one day you wake up and you don't have any problem, check your blood pressure, you're most probably dead, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I love that. So the thing that you have to have passion and you have to know every day you have challenges in front of you. Mm -hmm. But you have to create the right team along, among yourself that can support you to take you to the goal that you have ahead of you and working really nicely together to get there. So that I, I can't emphasize how much the team can burn you and can make you successful. And that's one of the, the greatest things to have. So what's been some of your biggest challenges since you've got this passion for it and you, you set up your team and you're going after the market. What's some of the biggest challenges that you face as a founder? Market awareness and market fit and letting people what is available to use. That's the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. And thanks to the system that we, we provided and focused and years that we spent on this, we, uh, we got the market fit. 
availability for our product because you can have the best product in the market you can have a best solution but if you don't find your market fit yeah you're not going to get there so one of the yeah. you know, biggest challenge for us to market fit for our product yeah, that's a good one, right? Marketing is if, if people don't know you exist and know the solution that you're solving, you can have the best product in the world. And, you know, what's the blueprint for your specific solution? You've got to discover that as you go along and make adjustments, right? Absolutely. So I imagine that's absolutely. And that's one of the things you need to be really agile. As I mentioned, we just pivoted like three or four times to get to this point because we had uh, solutions that a lot of people wanted that but then again it's getting that to the hand of a customer and sometimes as a startup and as starting a company you need to make sure you become profitable you make sure you need to become you know sustainable so a lot of people might like your product but they're not happy to pay for it or they might not happy to be your advocate to use it they like yeah. it. so from liking it to get to the people to actually using and pay for it that's two different things. And that's the challenge to get to that point. So let's talk about the customer problem and solution that Jib is actually addressing. You know, one of the main things is the main challenges customer faces with traditional whiteboarding. And so how does Jib address that issue? I see you got a whiteboard behind you. Absolutely. So what we are doing, you know, as a technology, you know, we can turn any type of camera to act as an artificial eye. So what it mm. it looks at a basically a surface and understand this surface is a, is a writing surface. So it could be a whiteboard, glass board, paper, doesn't really matter. You know, flip chart, it really doesn't care. So as long as it looks at the looks at the surface, is understand it's a writing surface. Then basically just make that you know writing on that surface digitally available in a collaboration space like WebEx or other, you know, you know, right. video conferencing platforms. So it doesn't really matter. So it makes it available. So what we are, everything happens at, you know, at that moment is through our AI. So we're working with a vision AI and generative AI to make these things really available for, for the, for the clients. So, uh, that's basically what, what we are doing. We capturing this wiper. So a lot the user. Specifically, I start with the, with the Cisco devices because that's a very, you know, uh, we made it, our journey very easy and adaption with the, with the basically the clients, especially focusing on enterprise customers, make it really simple and easy. What this means, we are just a, basically a, a macro sits on these devices as a jib button. By clicking on that, the camera automatically adjusts towards the writing surface like a whiteboard behind me. And then basically understand that's a writing surface. Now from that moment, anything that you write on that, it automatically appears as a sh share a screen into any meeting that you are in. As you know, on the devices, you can run a team meeting, WebEx meeting, Zoom meeting, you know, it doesn't matter. Right. Anything that we are doing. So we don't care which basically meeting uh video conferencing you go into the devices you make it available for any platform in the devices to be able to use so that's basically what we're doing so if i was trying to uh feed back to you what i just heard one of the biggest challenges that you typically face in a meeting most conference rooms have analog whiteboards Today, most conference rooms don't have digital whiteboards, right? So, you know, Google tried with Jamboard, WebEx has um, the WebEx board, Microsoft has their board, but it's not deployed in a ubiquitous manner, right? And people like the simplicity of just going up to a whiteboard and grabbing a dry eraser, smelling it, and then <laughs> writing, writing on the board, right? Uh, so... The question then, especially with hybrid work, now that people are working remote in a conference room, if someone's writing at the whiteboard, unless the camera is positioned in such a way that it's pointed at the whiteboard, which typically it's not, um, they're left out of the conversation, right? And so what Jib is doing, what I'm hearing is that Jib has the ability, if there's a camera in that room to recognize that there's a whiteboard, 
It doesn't even have, the camera doesn't even need to be pointed directly at it. It's going to be at the side and you'll fix all that through AI. All right. And if someone writes, that writing then gets shared into the content channel. So anyone who's remote will see it, right? And we'll get to how they interact with it in a little bit, but they'll at least see it. And there's an AI aspect of it because, you know, if I'm standing in front of the content, then I move away from it it will sh it will purely show just that content that you've drawn so do i have that right absolutely correct so what what we're doing we adjust the perspective so even if the whiteboard is a 90 degree angles to the to the camera as long as the camera view we can capture it and we can adjust the perspective and the second thing that we do we remember the content so even if you're standing in front of the content we can show the content behind you because the, you know we, we remove the objects in front of the camera tray on. And the third thing that we do, we actually be snapshot of the specific you know moments that you write on the whiteboard, so we can make it available at the end of the session as mm -hmm. a file to you, so you can have a look at it as a brief story of what your whiteboarding session is about. What does that mean? You don't need to grab your mobile and take a picture of your whiteboard right. after everything before you wipe it down. You don't need to do that. The intelligently true AI capture all these moments and coming through that. So how's Jib? So it sounds like Jib's a fantastic complement to Cisco video devices that are in conference rooms. Uh, can you talk to me a little bit about how it integrates uh, and how easy that is? And I think we've already talked about the benefits to the users, but you know, if I'm an IT admin, I might be scared of, you know, putting another, you know, macro on my on my device and what's that user interface look like? So basic is is a we have two models of in, uh, implementation. One uh, basically adding a macro one by one into devices into your environment. And um, we have an integration to the uh, basically control hub. So if you're a control hub user, basically you can from there you can just name your devices and put Jeep solution on that. So all it does, it gives access to the camera to Jeep to, to send your stream to our basically AI engine that today it sits on the AWS. So all okay. you, we get your stream, we don't do any other operation on the, on, the, on the device. So on the device, all we're doing, we're doing two things. We have access to the UI of the device to add a Jeep icon on your on your basically navigator or basically the display things that you have it on your desk. And, and from that, we give access to the device to, to be able to to be able to give access to Jeep, uh, the stream that comes from the device through the macro. So we just basically install a very simple macro on the device, either one by one or we just deploy from the control hub and that's all we need to do. And the rest, we do it actually at our AWS. Uh, Got it. So Masood, you know, there's a lot of talk about generative AI and large language models. Is Jib looking to incorporate any of those technologies into your solution? We currently actually have it in our lab and that's, we're going to make it available to the public soon. It's using the generative AI, we capture in uh, what you're doing in the live whiteboarding session and turn that to a text summary intelligently mm -hmm. for you. So you can actually get a text summary of what you are doing. That's the first thing that we do. The second thing that we are, you know, we are doing at the, again, this is available in our lab and we just released, going to release that one by one into public. We actually now can make your dry erase board is to your to do your actionable items as well. So imagine you doing work on that and I assign a task to John. Okay. So the system understand this task is assigned to John and immediately gonna create fusing Jira, create a Jira task session and just allocate it to you, put it in your process and everything becomes actionable item from the actual whiteboard that you're doing. So that's the thing that we're using from a generative AI now to turn your dry erase board a very intelligent source of activity that you can just basically do your become your center of command. You do everything from there and everything gonna be sent to your different different activities. So that's huge. So what I'm hearing you say is that I can take an analog whiteboard 
And I've played with chat GPT in terms of its ability to say, recognize images and it can comment on those images because it's intelligent enough to uh, see what it is. Uh, so what you're telling me is that if I draw a chart, if I'm drawing something, if I'm writing text on the board, that you can then feed that into generative AI and it then has the ability to summarize what was written on that whiteboard and capture ad action items. Um, so not only do I not have to take a picture, <laughs> uh, I don't. I can see the progression of a, a whiteboarding session and it have that summarized to me in text. Is that what you're telling me? Absolutely correct. Wow, that's huge. Absolutely I can't wait to correct. see that. And yeah. and just by the way, you know, we're working closely with with uh, on that one as an initiative, working closely with Cisco. Uh, we're working closely with the Webex as well right now on that. And, uh, you know, hopefully this feature, uh, we, we're running a, a beta on this one. We work on a beta activity that becomes part of your uh, end summary that on right. your FedEx whiteboard you get, you, you know, that can become a part of the end summary that you get. It becomes a part of the summary that you get together. Yeah, so that'd be huge because WebEx today, if I'm having a meeting, say, with you on WebEx and we're talking about a topic with other people, I will get a meeting summary and I will get action items. But what's lost if someone were doing a whiteboard session, you know, that's not really captured and summarized, for, you know, from an AI perspective. And so that would be a, a huge, nice complement of those two solutions together. Yeah, no, that, that's exciting. Um, so... What's had what's the feedback been like from the users who've implemented uh, the jib into their workflow? So it's it's very exciting. The things that we hear about this, you know, first thing that you know that the, the first time the people see what we can do for them is like a magic for them. So because they don't have any expectation of something like this is available, and that's that's a really really good thing that maybe they, when we. First on the scene. But what we hear back that's even more exciting that is actually resolving something that helps their hybrid meeting very complete. And that's that's the thing that we, we get back. You make it really easy for people. Now they can jump easily to the whiteboard and express what they want without going through any setup or doing anything extra. If they just click a button and start doing this. So this is this is very exciting for them is you know and one of the best feedbacks that we get it's uh, you know a lot of organizations these days they have data that they have inside the organization they mm -hmm. have to be uh, compliance so they right. have like compliance yeah. for the data and the item that goes on the whiteboard is actually data especially if you go to the government that becomes more important yeah because they have to show the track of everything happening inside the world a lot of these data sits on the people iphone or you know mm -hmm. so they take a photo of these things when they lose basically there's two things there's compliance the other thing they're losing the data that is created important information they're losing ip that's been generated in these meeting rooms with our auto save functionality, all this information kept within the organization's you know, premises. So now you have more data to work on and the things that can happen from that is humongous. So one of the things that we're working on the roadmap, these things like you know, in, a, in, a, in a longer future that's coming, is to connect all these rooms within your environment. So we are very security conscious. So we, we don't hold any of the customer's data as soon as we finish everything, we send it and we don't hold any information. But well, one of the things that we can provide, we can interconnectability uh, of all these rooms that you have based on what you were doing inside yeah. the environment. So now you are work of me and you working on this whiteboard on basically creating next, you know, Airbus engine, you know, and the other team member in, in another country or another location, they've been talking about the same thing within the company. Not through our generative AI, we can connect all this information and bring it to you. And you say, oh, you were talking about this subject. Somebody from the other group has well been talking this subject. Connect this thing and this data becomes really, really important for the keeping the IP within the company 
and extend the IP and make it a product ready for the market much quicker, much better. Yeah, no, that's 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 certainly powerful because, you know, things that are written in the analog world, you know, I remember back in the day you put the big do not erase sign on there and but even that was temporary. So the not only be able to capture that and continue to capture that, but then tie that together with others who may be working on the same thing and making it part of your overall uh, data compliance strategy, I think is huge. Absolutely. So uh, I think we got a good idea of the market and the, the, the gaps that, that Jib is filling. Uh, it sounds like there's a lot of innovation incorporating AI into that solution set, which I think is huge. Uh, so as we wrap up, what advice would you give anyone out there thinking about starting their own tech company? Okay. Yeah, this is, uh, it's not a, I know that's a large question, it's right? Question. It's not <laughs> easy. But one thing that I can say is, um, you have to be ready to challenge yourself. Yeah. So that's, that's the, that's the thing that I can say. It's not the easy road, but it's very exciting if it's made for you. So the way that I'm looking at it is this. If you're doing this for making extra money, don't do it. Yeah. If you're doing this because you're bored from what you're doing, don't do this. But if you're doing this because you're not happy with currently what you're doing and just putting pressure on yourself because you always want to be innovating, always want to challenge yourself, and then your organization or wherever you're working limits you from doing that, then I think is the right thing for you to do. So it's it's all about your personality and how much challenge and stress you can take. And do your health check before that because you know it's not, it's gonna be lots of stress and check check your blood pressure before starting doing that. Yes. Get a physical before you, yeah. you go on this yeah. endeavor, right? Well wow, that that's that's good advice, Basud. Right. Uh, so as we wrap up here. I want you to be able to give your plug. Where can listeners learn more about Jib? And you know, if they wanted to kick the tires on it, how do they go about doing it? Sure thing. So the best thing that to go to our website is uh, www.jib.ai. So that's spelled J-I-B-B dot A-I. So that's basically where you can go and check you know, all the resources there. And if you want to get in touch, uh, you know, with my team, sales at jeep.ai, or you can come, anybody wants to come directly to me, I'm always happy to take, you know, calls and emails from, from all the, you know, community, Masoud, M-A-S-O-U-D, at jeep.ai. I'm available as well. Anybody wants to, draw, you know, drop me a line or have a chat and just work together, I'm more than happy. As I mentioned, we are, you mentioned, actually, we are part of Solution Plus. So it's easy for all the you know, partners, all the customers to deal with Jib. Don't need to create any new accounts or anything. And uh, we have uh, solutions available even from the pilot all the way to actually product listed in the Solution Plus. And my team is happy to get in touch with them, get in touch with us. We can, we can help you to set up. We can help you to try. We can help you to have... Uh, your own account, all the Cisco employees, we give them free accounts to, to demo. So anybody wants you know, to, to join and just work on this, we are happy to help them. And yeah, work together. We are um, always, you know, open door policy that we are, we are here to help. And uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's something that I'm glad to be here and talk to, their, to your community and hopefully get, get more active. So get in touch with me anyways. That's great. So Masood, I'd like to Thank you for sharing your founder's journey uh, uh, with your company, Jib, and the innovations that you're bringing to the market. Again, I'd like to thank you for joining today. I really enjoyed the conversation. Uh, absolute pleasure. Glad to be here. Before I leave, I just want to share something. That's what we do with AI. We are adapting technology to the human habit. So I just want to mention that we are, come, we are here for all the users to be able to do things the way they used to do. And we get the AI to work for us, not the other way around. Our that's right. Work, the AI, the way the AI wants me to do. So that's my idea at the moment that I'm working on it heavily. 
I like that perspective, right? People shouldn't have to adjust. Uh, people are creatures of habit. And so if you can get technology to uh, support that habit, then adoption should increase, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. All right, perfect, perfect. But again, Masood, thank you for joining. Thank you so much, John, for the invitation. Really appreciate it. Glad to. All right, great. Thank you. Right. Bye.